Big 12 Media Days, which went down last week, I was out there with our guy, Chris Hummer, and he talked to a one Marvin Mims at Oklahoma, who said to him, he was going to transfer out of OU had Lincoln Riley stayed in Norman. Well, obviously change came to him. Riley's now at USC. Mims now intends to stay in Norman himself. But I want to know, Blake, was he justifiably upset in this scenario or was it overdone a little bit on Mims' end? I'm interested to see how you gauge the situation. I mean, I think a little bit of both. I mean, if you look at, at Mims's numbers last year, he only caught 32 balls for 705 yards, uh, which is incredible when you look at the average because that's, that's about 22 yards uh, per touch. So that's just not enough balls for a guy of his caliber. I mean, he's an electric player that's a playmaker for Oklahoma uh, that, that, you know, needs to touch the ball more. I wrote an article earlier in the season uh, on how it was almost like he was being used as a decoy. But I think you have to look at some of that as the, the struggles that Spencer Rattler had early in the season at Oklahoma and then Caleb Williams coming in after him, not having a million reps to get ready, uh, ran a little bit different style of offense uh, for Oklahoma. So I think every kid thinks about transferring at some point in their college career. I know I did uh, at Texas as a freshman. You see other players making plays and getting the ball. You know, every receiver in the country thinks they're open on every single play. So uh, Mims is a great player. I think he did a great, you know, made a great decision by staying at Oklahoma. They're going to give him the ball. Uh, they've got a good offense to, to really make things happen for him. And I expect a, a huge season out of him this year because he's a, a great player that deserves a few more touches, in my opinion. Do you want to know why they started? Everybody started running no huddle offenses. They started running them because coaches were tired of the receivers coming to the huddle and telling the quarterback that they were open on the last play. If you call any guy right now that's played receiver at any level, he's going to answer the phone. He's not going to say hello. He's going to say, I'm open. If you look at the University of Oklahoma a year ago, Spencer Rattler started off rocky. You put in the freshman and Caleb Williams in the game. You're not running really the full scope of the offense, but he's the first receiver I've ever heard that had an issue with Lincoln Riley's offense. But I can say this, that if you didn't get the touches that you feel like you should get, the transfer portal is available now, and it's something that guys are going to think about as they think about their career. Mims is an awesome receiver. He's a high-level prospect who should command quite a bit of touches, and we'll see if he's happy this year with the situation. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm, it's interesting to me to, to see all these people hating on Lincoln Riley the second he leaves. I mean, he had numerous coaches, uh, numerous players that left and stayed uh, that that the narrative has been they've upgraded with their coaching. They've upgraded, you know, everything about the, the culture of the program. So uh, it's always interesting, interesting to me to see that uh, when coaches leave, what players say you know, publicly uh, about their coach that's gone. So uh, I think Lincoln Riley, I mean, on the field, did what he was supposed to do. He won the Big 12, you know, the majority of the time that he was at Oklahoma and did a good job. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how he does at USC. I expect him to do a great job, uh, bring that program back to life. And I think Brent Venables as well at Oklahoma is going to do a good job, just to, maybe in a different way than, than, than Lincoln Riley did. Everybody doesn't like their coach. That's part of the game. Some of the greatest coaches across sports in the country have adversarial relationships with some of their former players. If you sit around and you ask those guys about it, being a coach can be very uncomfortable. As you, A lot of times you're telling guys things they don't want to hear. A lot of times that you have to explain to a guy why he can't have his way. And when the guy leaves, everybody always says, I hate him and, he's gl and I'm glad that he's gone. But you got to continue to win at a high level because the honeymoon only lasts as long up until the first loss.